Aqualung is the fourth studio album by the rock band Jethro Tull, released in 1971. It is regarded, despite the band's disagreement, as a concept album featuring a central theme of the distinction between religion and God. The album's dour musings on faith and religion have marked it as one of the most cerebral albums ever to reach millions of rock listeners. Aqualung's success signaled a turning point in the band's career, which went on to become a major radio and touring act. Recorded at Island Records Studio in London, it was their first album with John Evan as a full-time member, their first with new bassist Jeffrey Hammond, and last album featuring Clive Bunker on drums. Something of a departure from the band's previous work, the album features more acoustic material than previous releases, and Inspired by photographs of homeless people on the Thames embankment taken by singer Ian Anderson's wife Jenny, contains a number of recurring themes, addressing religion along with Anderson's own personal experiences. Aqualung has sold more than 7 million units worldwide, and is thus Jethro Tull's best-selling album. The album was generally well received critically and has been included on several music magazine best of lists. The album spawned two singles, Hymn 43 and Locomotive Breath. Topic. Production After an American tour in 1970, bass player Glenn Cornick was fired from the band, and was replaced with Jeffrey Hammond, an old friend of Ian Anderson's. Aqualung would be Hammond's first album with the band. It would also mark the first time John Evan had recorded a full album with the band, as his only prior involvement was to provide several keyboard parts on the previous 1970 album, Benefit. The album was one of the first to be recorded at the newly opened studios of Island Records in Basing Street, London. Led Zeppelin were recording their untitled fourth album at the same time. In an interview on the 25th anniversary edition of the album, Toll's bandleader Ian Anderson said that trying to record in that studio was very difficult, because of its horrible, cold, echoey feel. There were two recording studios at the location, Led Zeppelin worked in the smaller studio while Toll got the larger, which was the main body of a converted church. The orchestral segments were arranged by David Palmer, who had worked with the band since 1968's This Was, and would later join as a keyboard player. Aqualung would be the last Jethro Tull album to include Clive Bunker as a band member, as he retired shortly after recording to start a family. <laughs> Topic. Musical style The songs on the album encompass a variety of musical genres, with elements of folk, blues, psychedelia, and hard rock. The riff-heavy nature of tracks such as Locomotive Breath, Hymn 43, and Wind Up is regarded as a factor in the band's increased success after the release of the album, with Jethro Tull becoming a major arena act and a fixture on FM radio. According to AllMusic, in a stylistic departure from Jethro Tull's earlier albums, many of Aqualung's songs are acoustic, Cheap Day Return, Wandering Aloud, and Slipstream, are short, completely acoustic, Bridges, and Mother Goose, is also mostly acoustic. Anderson claims his main inspirations for writing the album were Roy Harper and Burt Janch. Topic. Themes Aqualung has widely been regarded as a concept album, featuring a central theme of the distinction between religion and God. The album's dour musings on faith and religion have marked it as one of the most cerebral albums ever to reach millions of rock listeners. 
Academic discussions of the nature of concept albums have frequently listed Aqualung amongst their number. The initial idea for the album was sparked by some photographs that Anderson's wife Jenny took of homeless people on the Thames embankment. The appearance of one man in particular caught the interest of the couple, who together wrote the title song, Aqualung. The first side of the LP, titled Aqualung, contains several character sketches, including the eponymous character of the title track, and the schoolgirl prostitute Cross-Eyed Mary, as well as two autobiographical tracks, including Cheap Day Return, written by Anderson after a visit to his critically ill father. The second side, titled My God, contains three tracks, My God, Him 43, and Wind Up that address religion in an introspective, and sometimes irreverent, manner. However, despite the names given to the album's two sides and their related subject matter, Anderson has consistently maintained that Aqualung is not a concept album. A 2005 interview included on Aqualung Live gives Anderson's thoughts on the matter. I always said at the time that this is not a concept album, this is just an album of varied songs of varied instrumentation and intensity in which three or four are the kind of keynote pieces for the album but it doesn't make it a concept album. In my mind when it came to writing the next album, Thick as a Brick, was done very much in the sense of, WHUH, if they thought Aqualung was a concept album, oh. Okay, we'll show you a concept album, and it was done as a kind of spoof, a send-up, of the concept album genre. But Aqualung itself, in my mind was never a concept album. Just a bunch of songs. Drummer Clive Bunker believes that the record's perception as a concept album is a case of Chinese whispers, explaining. You play the record to a couple of Americans, tell them that there's a lyrical theme loosely linking a few songs, and then notice the figure of the Aqualung character on the cover, and suddenly the word is out that Jethro Tull have done a concept album. The thematic elements Jethro Tull explored on the album those of the effects of urbanization on nature, and of the effects of social constructs such as religion on society would be developed further on most of the band's subsequent releases. Ian Anderson's frustration over the album's labeling as a concept album directly led to the creation of Thick as a Brick 1972, intended to be a deliberately over-the-top concept album in response. Topic. Other songs Lick Your Fingers Clean was recorded for Aqualung, but was not included on the album. The song was drastically reworked as Two Fingers for Toll's 1974 album, War Child. Lick Your Fingers Clean was eventually released in 1988 on the 20 Years of Jethro Toll collection. It was then released as a bonus track on the 1996 and 2011 reissues of Aqualung. Another song, Wandering Again, was recorded on 21 June 1970 together with the original version of Wandering Aloud, included as one single seven-minute song on the Stephen Wilson remaster of Associated Recordings 1970-1971, titled Wandering Aloud, Again, and was considered for release on the album before Anderson decided to drop it from the final track listing. Wandering Again was subsequently released on the compilation album Living in the Past in 1972. A re recording of Wandering Aloud was included on Aqualung. Glenn Cornick played bass on the song and says it is his favorite song he recorded with the band. Cornick also played bass on early studio recordings of My God and A Couple of Other Songs though he did not say which they were. Topic. Album cover The album's original cover art by Burton Silverman features a watercolor portrait of a long-haired, bearded man in shabby clothes. 
The idea for the cover came from a photograph Anderson's wife took of a homeless man on Thames Embankment, and Anderson later felt it would have been better to have used the photograph rather than commission the painting. Ian Anderson recalls posing for a photograph for the painting, though Silverman claims it was a self-portrait. The artwork was commissioned and purchased by Chrysalis Records head Terry Ellis in 1971. Silverman was paid a flat fee of $1,500 for the painting. There was no written contract. The artist says the art was only licensed for use as an album cover, and not for merchandising. He approached the band seeking remuneration for the additional uses, such as printing it on t-shirts and coffee mugs. The original artwork for both the front and back covers are missing. They were apparently stolen from a London hotel room, or perhaps from Chrysalis' office during a robbery. The original artwork for the interior gatefold painting was not taken during the robbery and is held by Terry Ellis. Topic. Release In April 1971, Aqualung peaked at number 4 on the UK album chart. When the CD version was released in 1996, it reached number 52. It peaked at number 7 on the Billboard Music Chart's North American Pop Albums chart. The single, Him 43, hit number 91 on the Billboard Hot 100 chart. The album would go on to sell over 7 million copies, and is the band's best selling album. Aqualung was one of only two Jethro Tull albums released in quadraphonic sound, the other being War Child. 1974. The quadraphonic version of Wind Up, which is in a slightly higher key, is included on the later CD reissue of the album as Wind Up Quad Version. The single, Him 43, was released on 14 August 1971, and reached number 91 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts, spending two weeks in the chart. The song was the first single released by the band in the United States. It was later included in the video game Rock Band 2 as downloadable content, which also featured the album's title track. The album was re-released in a 40th anniversary edition on 31 October 2011. The release contains a new stereo and 5.1 surround remix of the album by British musician and producer Stephen Wilson, and comes in two different editions. A. Collector's Edition containing the album on LP and two CDs, as well as DVD and Blu-ray discs and a hardback book, and a special edition, containing the two CDs and an abridged version of the book. Justifying the remix, Stephen Wilson said, Jethro Tull's Aqualung is a masterpiece, but was sonically a very poor-sounding record. So, some didn't rate it as highly as they should have. What we did with Aqualung was really make that record gleam in a way it never gleamed before. I think a lot of people, including myself, have come around to thinking that the album is a lot better than they even gave it credit for previously. So, there is certainly something very gratifying about being able to polish what was already a diamond and making it shine in a way it never has before. Additionally, according to mastering engineer Steve Hoffman there were tape stretching problems with the original session mixdown master, implying that many editions of the album used multi-generation copies as their source. Topic Critical reception Aqualung received mixed to favorable reviews from contemporary music critics. Rolling Stone magazine's Ben Gerson lauded its fine musicianship, calling it serious and intelligent, although he felt that the album's seriousness undermined its quality. Sounds said that its taste and variety made it the band's finest work. Aqualung was voted the 22nd best album of 1971 in the Village Voices annual Paz and Jop Critics Poll. Robert Christgau, the poll's creator, was more critical of the album in a 1981 review, and described Anderson's undeveloped cultural interests and negative views on religion and human behavior as both boring and pretentious. In retrospective reviews, the album is generally lauded and viewed as a classic. 
Allmusic's Bruce Ader called Aqualung a bold statement and extremely profound. In a review of the album's 40th anniversary re-release, Sean Murphy of Pop Matters said that Aqualung is, to be certain, a cornerstone of the then-nascent prog rock canon, but it did, and does, exist wholly on its own terms as a great rock album, period. Murphy also praised the additional material featured on the release, finding that the new content was where a great album gets even better. Steve Harris, the bass player for the heavy metal band Iron Maiden, has called Aqualung a classic album, lauding its fantastic playing, fantastic songs, attitude, and vibe. Iron Maiden would go on to cover Cross-Eyed Mary as the B-side of their 1983 single The Trooper. Aqualung has also been appraised highly in retrospective listings, compiled by music writers and magazines see accolades. Even Martin Barr's solo on the album's title track was included in Guitarist Magazine's list of the 20 greatest guitar solos of all time at number 20. Topic. Track listing Topic. 1971 original release All tracks written by Ian Anderson, except where noted, original North American reprise records pressings of Aqualung contained a slightly edited version of the title song, with its first three seconds i.e., the first repetition of the song's signature riff removed. These pressings correspondingly list the song's length at 631. Topic. 1996 CD reissue. Topic. 2011 40th Anniversary Special Edition The 2011 version was remixed by Stephen Wilson and remastered by Peter Mew. CD1, Original Album Topic. 2016 40th Anniversary Adapted Edition The 2016 edition was remastered by Stephen Wilson of his 2011 remixed material as he didn't like Peter Mew's mastering. Topic. Musicians and technicians Jethro Tullian Anderson, lead vocals, acoustic guitar, flute, production Martin Barr, electric guitar, descant recorder Jeffrey Hammond as Jeffrey Hammond Hammond backing vocals on Mother Goose bass guitar alto recorder odd voices John Evan piano organ mellotron Clive Bunker drums and percussion additional personal Glenn Cornick bass guitar played with the band at rehearsals for the album in June 1970 some of which may also have been recording sessions particularly early versions of my God! and Wondering Again, Wondering Aloud. Although he is not credited on the album. John Burns, Recording Engineer. David Palmer, Orchestral Arrangements and Conducting. Burton Silverman, Album Artwork. Terry Ellis, Executive Producer. Topic. Charts. Topic. Certifications Topic. Accolades equals equals footnotes